Keokuk County Expo 2024 Stars, Stripes, and Summer Nights is the place to be in July. Things start off with a bang on Monday, July 15th with Rogue Rodeo at 7.30 p.m. On Thursday, July 18th is the Keokuk County Expo Queen Contest and the Bill Riley Talent Search. On Friday, Tyler Richardson and the High Bank Boys will be in concert starting at 7.30 p.m. And then on Saturday, it's the figure eight races at the Keokuk County Expo. Bring the family have a great time and enjoy the fair at the Keokuk County Expo in Sigourney. The Delta Fireman's Ball is Saturday, July 27th. You can enjoy food, live music, games, and more. There will be a poker run from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Keith Davis will be playing music from 6 to 9 p.m. For more information on the Delta Fireman's Ball, contact Jim or Fake Harry at 319-212-8772. The Delta Fireman's Ball is coming up Saturday, July 27th. Don't miss it. Another exciting edition of Real Talk with Aaron and Steve, brought to us by New Life Community Church in Wellman, Iowa. Got Pastor Aaron M. Fleming, and I'm just Steve. S Stephen K. Shetler. Yeah, Stephen K. Shetler. Stephen K. Shetler. And we're coming to you live from the, what studio? Are we Oski in? Dental Studio. The Oski Dental Studio yes. right there. You can see the yes. sign the sign Those behind us. Sponsors and, and stuff. And uh, lots of exciting stuff going on in Keokuk County these days. Yes. Kind of makes me sad that I live in Wellman. <laughs> you guys have got it going on down here in Sigourney Land. All the, yeah. the, 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 the expo. Does that yeah. mean the county fair? It is. Well, Keokuk County has two different county fairs. Did you know that? I kind of did. One in Sigourney and one in Wachir, right? Yep. Yep. And did I pronounce Wachir correctly? Yeah, I mean, I, I say Wachir. Wachir. If you've been around long enough, you just say Wachir. <laughs> okay. But it looks like what cheer. What cheer. So, yeah, two county fairs in Keokuk County. Uh, yeah, we've got the Fireman's Ball in Delta coming up at the end of the month. And, yeah, of course, just got through July 4th with all the activities. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, of stuff. July 4th in Wellman is always a great time. Great fireworks show, and, and people come from... Uh, it, it's interesting, Kelowna doesn't have a fireworks show. Okay. Like Kelowna's kind of our, our big brother down the yeah. road in the, yeah. mid, in the mid Prairie school system, and Kelowna doesn't... Uh, and I don't even know the history of that, so Kelowna doesn't do a show, so we pull lots and lots of people from Kelowna and have good times in the park earlier in the day, and, of course, a giant parade that goes right by my house, so... By now, I've had way more candy than is strictly necessary, but uh, that's your rolls. <laughs> yeah, good times, summer, and by by the time this airs, uh, uh, we'll be getting close to the uh, high school baseball and softball tournaments, yep. I think, and so just a just a fun time of year. Yes. So yeah, hey, uh, I want to I want to pick up on a theme that I've been preaching about at church for a couple of weeks. Okay, and and that came to me through some friends who were talking to another friend and the friends were like, Hey, Aaron, how do, how do you know if you're saved? It's a good question. So yeah, that, that led to some really good questions. And we started off with like, what, what, what do you need to be saved from? And so we just talked through sin and, and the power of Satan. And, um, uh, I can't remember. Did, have we done a show about the wrath of God? I think, think it's at least been mentioned okay <laughs> and and so we talked about that some um because that that idea shows up a couple of times through the bible and kind of what we settled on together as we talked through it is um there are some things that actually should make god angry sure like oh yeah like if if you if you or i saw someone doing something evil and we weren't angry that would mean that we were evil <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so God is going to see some things on earth that, that should make him angry. And, um, he's, he's a good God and a kind God and a merciful God, but he's also a just and righteous God. 
And so his anger is gonna gonna make him want to do something about evil in the world. And it turns out that what God wants to do is save us from our sin. And um, so you know, punishment is always a last ditch option. Like, I mean, he's probably got a fireball that he can go <laughs> bing. Yeah. <laughs> And, but he holds back because he wants us. He wants us to go go to heaven. Yeah, he wants us to go to heaven, and has made every opportunity. But we get kind of goofy. So God, God gives us the offer of salvation, and I don't know what it was. I'll ask you in a moment what it was like for you when when you first got saved. Um, for me, I was I was fourteen. I I think um, I had had some experiences with God before that. Um, so, so I knew God was real, but I was, I was 14 and I decided to, to receive God's offer of salvation and, um, and just committed my life to, to loving him and serving him. And so I was very excited and I felt great for about two weeks. (laughs) And like so many other, uh, so many other Christians, I received salvation at, at summer camp and, and, uh, did did you ever do Bible camp? Okay. Never went to a summer camp. Not, nope. Yeah. So so it's a, it's a great atmosphere and you're out in nature and you feel close to God and all your friends are there and you got campfires and uh, so it's a it's a beautiful way to encounter God and then you go back to daily life. Yeah. <laughs> and two weeks later you're going, Whoa, was was that real? Oh no, wait, was that was that doubt? If I just doubted, am I really saved? And and it's pretty easy to go down this this uh, uh, into this tailspin of am I really saved? Yep. So does that does that sound familiar to you, or did you just get saved one day and like whoop? I was perfect. I've been perfect ever <laughs> since. Thank you. <laughs> now, all right. So my so my story. I don't know if I've really told this much outside of like church walls, but uh, uh, so this will be my like first public <laughs> proclamation of my story. So my dad invited me to go to a Promise Keepers conference, which was a thing back in the 90s and into the 2000s. Uh, whereas a men's conference, we went to the Minneapolis Metrodome um, and the stadium was full of guys. Uh, and I was like, I didn't really want to go. But I was like, yeah, my dad's asking. I suppose I'll go. I'll go and hang out and just kind of make it through this weekend. Uh, but no, it was, I think it was the first night of the conference, which it was like, what, like a two and a half day conference or something like that. And I, they got, they got to the point of doing like a, an altar call. And I literally found myself, we were standing in the stadium. I, I found myself on my tippy toes, like being pulled to the stadium floor. I mean, it, you can believe me or not believe me, but that's what happened. I was I found myself literally being physically pulled up on my toes to come to the floor. So my dad and I went to the to the floor of the Metrodome, and uh, yeah, I received Christ that that day, and and yeah, it was tears and and being happy. But yeah, then afterwards, you go back to regular life, and uh, you get back into regular temptations and and the swing of things. So. Yeah, it's 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 you're on fire there for a few weeks and then it kind of slowly starts to fade back into real life yeah and then and then you start to wonder like yeah was that real yes or am i really saved and uh and and part of part of uh where my story comes from was was talking with a, a group of men who are um going through addictions recovery so they're you know there's still some of them experiencing strong cravings for alcohol or strong cravings for meth or, or sure. you know, kind of stuff like that. And, and so they're just wrestling with if I'm if I'm saved, uh, why why do I still want to go get drunk? Um, and and uh, so so just some challenging things like that. And um yeah, I, I, that's just that's a real common question for anybody who's a Christian. But hey, Steve, I think the Scripture holds some answers for us. And you're a pastor, and I'm a pastor, <laughs> so like wow. I kind of I kind of like the Bible and stuff. <laughs> I want to, uh, and and we could. Oh, there's so many different directions to go for real. 
But I want to share a little bit with you from, from the book of Ephesians. I just cracked my Bible open over here. That's why I'm looking down at this weird angle. Um, so uh, Ephesians chapter 1, I'm going to start in verse 11. It says, In him, meaning in Christ, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. I want to pause right there because I just used the predestination word. Okay. And and uh, that, that gets us thinking, um, uh, oh, so does that mean, like, wait, what if I... What if I wasn't predestined? What if God didn't actually predestine me? And what if I'm actually supposed to go to hell? Is that why I feel, you know, this this temptation, or is that why the feeling of of joy that I experienced at at uh, uh, Promise Keepers is that why it's going away? Um, so let me just say this real quick about predestination. The emphasis here is in Him we were chosen. That means that this is not some accident that's happening to God. God's not like, oh wow, I didn't really want to save Steve, but he just kind of <laughs> blundered. He just kind of blundered into the promise keeper. I didn't ask him to come to promise keepers. I didn't have a plan for that. <laughs> was his name in the book? <laughs> yeah. What his what, name what's, is? No, no. <laughs> no. God, God is is always. And then let's let's break down the word predestination. Pre means before, right? destination is a place that you're you're going there is a a a destination in mind but have have you ever gotten a car with a destination in mind and not gotten there sure yeah gps before gps got really good uh would take you out in the middle of nowhere (laughs) and say you've arrived (laughs) yeah you've arrived arrived (laughs) at, at what a cornfield uh when I, I had a truck driving dro- job when GPS was quite young, so like in 2002, mm-hmm. and uh, and it really wanted us to. We, we were doing furniture deliveries in in like northern New Jersey and out on Long Island and Manhattan, and so a lot of East Coast stuff. And GPS really wanted to take us on parkways. It's, we don't have parkways out here in the Midwest, but a parkway. Uh, the, you, you can't take trucks on parkway. Okay. So we're in this truck and the GPS really wanted us to be on the parkways. It's like, take a right, take a right, turn around, take a right. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then you just got to look at a, an old fashioned map and figure it out. Um, <laughs> so all that to say, you, you can have a destination in mind, but then not go there for a wide variety of reasons. So my belief about predestination is that is that God is choosing you. It's not an accident, Steve, that you stumbled into promise keepers and God was like, "Oh no, I didn't really want it. I didn't want Steve in heaven, but like I guess he's here now. Oh, I just don't know what to do." Surprise, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> But no, God, God chose you and God chose me and God chose any one of our listeners. And, and even if you haven't received salvation yet, God is trying to choose you out there. He is, is pointing at you and saying, I want you in heaven. I want you to follow me. I want you to know me. And I have, I have a destination in mind for you. So come on, come to the destination. Um, and, then, and then some of us, I, I think choose to not go to that destination. So um, that's that's that first little part there. Wanted to, to clear that up. So he, he, God, works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and having believed and here's, here's the part about how do you know if you're saved. You were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So we're not going to go real deep into like all the theology of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And does do you get the baptism of the Holy Spirit when you get saved or at some time after you're saved or like, and, and people chop that up and, and we're just not going to go into it today, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I think you and I, we both kind of have a little Pentecostal in us. 
exactly. Um, so, so we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which I describe in this way. And I'm going to do this at church next Sunday, Steve. This is okay. you may want to come visit New Life. Right. Um, there's going to be at least one donut for me. Ooh. But uh, okay, so so we've heard the word baptism, and and maybe maybe our listeners have seen that in church where somebody gets dunked in water, or in a different kind of church have some water sprinkled on their head, um, and we think of baptism being this like this religious word. Mm-hmm. It's it's just the Greek word baptizo, which means exactly the same thing as dunk. Okay. So baptize just means to get dunked. So when we baptize in water, we dunk somebody in water. Yeah. When we get baptized, so so we human beings dunk each other in water as a sign of of uh, uh, repentance of sin and cleansing by the by the blood of Jesus and a bunch of other stuff when we get baptized in the holy spirit Jesus himself dunks us in the holy spirit okay so i like i like donut theology probably cuz i like donuts but imagine if you would that right here in the Oski Dental studio we had a cup of coffee and a donut i don't know if Oski Dental approves of donut eating <laughs> I'm sure they they're all right with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They probably a job security, right? Eat yeah. more eat more yeah. sugar and we'll still have a job. No, so so uh imagine that you break uh, a delicious donut in half and you look in and it's full of air pockets, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you dunk that donut in the coffee, it soaks up coffee. And all of those air pockets get saturated with coffee. Mm-hmm. The donut doesn't stop being a, do- a donut. It just stops being a donut with a whole bunch of air bubbles inside of it. Okay. It becomes a fusion of donut and coffee. Or chocolate chocolate milk or hot <laughs> chocolate if you prefer. If you're not a coffee drinker. You're not a coffee drinker, are you? No. You prefer to get your caffeine the old-fashioned way. <laughs> from Diet, Diet Pepsi. <laughs> The natural way. The natural way, exactly. <laughs> or sometimes from the dew of the mountains. Yes. Do you do you drink Mountain Dew? I am a Diet Mountain Dew drinker. Diet Mountain yes. Dew and Diet Pepsi. Yes. But definitely Pepsi products. Yes. Uh, okay, so um, when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit, we don't stop being ourselves. But, but the empty parts of us are filled with the Holy Spirit, and we become a fusion of ourselves and this, this indwelling Holy Spirit that inhabits our spirit. And uh, so that's pretty cool. And I see uh, we're, we're kind of kind of coming to the end of our time together. Mm-hmm. And so this may be something we need to, to pick up again, because um, maybe... Maybe our listeners have heard some goofy things about the Holy Spirit, like, well, the Holy Spirit doesn't really do stuff anymore. Or maybe you've seen some people doing some stuff that they said was the Holy Spirit, but was kind of wild and crazy and sort of dumb looking and, and maybe <laughs> maybe even hurtful. Um, so there's a lot of confusion out there. So I think maybe we ought to come back to the Holy Spirit in a couple of weeks. What do you say? We can do that. All right. Well, it's been real and it's been fun. And it's been talk. Real talk. Real talk. Get it? <laughs> Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll we'll see you next week. All right. We do thank New Life Community Church in Wellman for being our headline sponsor on Real Talk.